I think it's already recording. But you have it backwards. You're taping yourself. There you go. <laughs> that wouldn't work. Okay, folks. So, that's my name, Sue Tyler. <laughs> you remember that it's ECG, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, remember last time I used the word Eindhoven with Dr. Eindhoven? Yeah. Today we're going to follow up, talk about it a little bit, okay? Since I'm an old dog, I, I can't stand calling it ECG, so I'm just going to refer to it as an EKG. All right. What we do here is a 12-lead EKG. Now, we have to define the word lead. Good luck in the camera. Is it catching? Yeah. All right. So, 12 lead EKG. The definition of the word lead. Lead in this particular case equals a point of view. Because we're going to examine the heart from 12 points of view. You may recall that we only have 10 wires on the EKG machine. Those of you that did the EKG already back there, how many wires are we placing on a person? How many stickies do we put on? One, two, two three, three, four, four. and then six, one, two, two, three, three four, four, five, six, six. Ten wires. Ten. How come? Uh, yeah, ten wires, and all together. And then, what are we talking about then? Twelve lead, ten wires. How? Twelve points of view from tel uh, from uh, uh, ten wires should make sense. Which, by the way, is one of the questions on the test. I will ask you, how many wires are in the twelve lead EKG? Most people rush into it and say 12. It's not, it's 10. Okay, so 12 points of view. We're going to look at the heart from 12 different directions. Okay, and. Uh, Morning. Careful. The camera. Recording. So, in any event, um, that's what we're talking about. So I'm going to draw you a little picture. Go ahead, draw with me. My deformed little guy over here. His chest. His legs. Biblically correct. <laughs> With a little fig leaf over there. Okay, so we really can't tell what gender this is. All right, so where do we place our stickies? Now, sticky is a rather technical term. I must explain myself. A sticky. Everybody knows what I'm talking about? Yeah. Does anybody know a true technical term for the word sticky? Oh gosh! Oh, oh, wait, wait. Hold on. I'll I'll leave That's you suffering. Uh, it's called an electrode. An electrode. <laughs> Who likes the word electrode? Doctors. Who doesn't like the word electrode? Patient. Why? Sick. It is scary, and I'd be scared too. Because if somebody says, I'm going to put some electrodes on you, I'm going to feel like somebody's going to electrocute me. So, <laughs> when you talk to doctors, call them electrodes. If you know your patient is a doctor, call it an electrode. If you know that your patient is just a regular human being, call it a sticky. Exercise your better judgment, okay? Stickies are cute. You think of a Band-Aid, right? Band-Aid would never hurt anybody. All right, makes sense? So call it a sticky, for the most part. All right, 
Because if you say electro, people will feel scared. And it's bad enough having an EKG done. I mean, you're in class all the time. You guys are doing EKG on one another. You know it's not scary. You know you're not going to get zapped. But several things happen to the patient. A, they are a patient. They're coming in to see what's wrong with them. So uh, uh, instantly they presume that there's something wrong. Well, they're going to look at you and say, am I having a heart attack? Now, what are you going to say? <laughs> What are you guys going to say? Huh? No. What are you going to say? Remember, we don't get paid enough to give them diagnostic opinion. Nor do we know enough to give them a diagnostic opinion. That's the doctor's job. You can just tell them that, I'm sorry, I just do these things. I can't read them. Okay? The doctor will be right in to talk about it. And, so, and don't use words like, don't worry, because the doctor may come in and say, you got to worry. All right, and uh, don't tell them everything is fine, because to you, you know, you look at a piece of paper and say, hey, everything looks good for me, everything I needed to do for this EKG, it looks good, it's straight, it's not crooked, all the pieces are there, it's good for me to give it to the doctor. So, looks good. Don't use these words, don't say it looks good. Okay. Looks good. Uh -uh. To a patient, looks good means, hey, I got no problem. Phew. And the doctor comes and says, you got a problem. But Steve said, there's nothing wrong with me. Steve, who's Steve? Oh, he doesn't work here anymore. <laughs> All right? Uh, you see what I'm saying? So, stay away from commentary. People need to feel comfortable. People need to feel relaxed. They can't be cold. They can't be hot. They can't be sweaty. They need to be as relaxed as humanly possible. So we put on stickies. Where do we put on stickies? On arms and legs. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. Now, I want to caution you here that since we're dealing with electricity, we're dealing with all sorts of tolerances, like resistance, like voltage, and so on and so forth, make sure if you're putting stickies on the lower arm, they all have to be at the same level. And if you put them on lower arm, on the forearm, make sure you put them on the lower leg. Don't put them here. It has to be uniform. because. What if a patient comes in with one leg missing? Well, don't put a sticky here and one over there. No, everything has to be uniform. And if they're coming in and you're moving in closer to the uh, hip, put it closer to the shoulder. Everything has to be uniform, okay? That doesn't mean that you need to walk around with a ruler and say, well, that's a little too low over there. No, you can eyeball it, okay? But try to hang him, uh, I mean, stick him about the same um, height. All right, make sense? There is a myriad of different stickies out there, used for different occasions. If you're working in the emergency department, ED for short, all right, uh, used to be called ER, now it's the emergency department. It really is an emergency department. But in any case, uh, there they have these stickies that you would need, uh, I don't know, a, a jackhammer to get them off of a person's body because they have to stick no matter what. The stickies that we use over here, if a person is sick and they're sweaty, they're just going to come right off. You will never be able to do an EKG on them. And sometimes they use little suction cups, sometimes they use the clamps on people, sometimes when a hairy beast like me right, comes in, you need to do a little shaving. It's a lot of fun. Your job is awesome. You're going to enjoy yourself. Okay, so... <clears throat> Moving right along. You're going to have a problem if the person is busted. Yes. But you, you, will, you will learn to do all these things. That's why it's imperative for all of you to practice on each other because you have all sorts of body types. People, please, make sure you donate your body to science over here. You know, you have to learn. Everybody has to learn. And I got to tell you, these EKGs, these practices, they are essential and vital to you. They don't hurt. All you got to do is close the uh, uh, curtain over there. You know, and go to town. All right? So be good to each other. Let yourself practice. There's no reason why you guys can't walk away with doing a couple EKGs every time you're here. But that's up to your instructors to what you're doing. But you know what? Just if you find yourself that you did everything you were supposed to do, go back and do an EKG. Because in the hospital or in the doctor's office, there's very little time. There's very, very little time for you to do anything. Okay? The entire physical exam is going to take, is going to take, uh, you know, no time at all. 
All right, so your job to do an EKG within five minutes. And in reality, you can get done in two nowadays. It's according to the old machines where you have to do each lead at a time. Today, all 12 of them print at the same time. It takes 10 seconds for it to come out. Once you hook the patient up with the, with the cables, done. The EKG is in. So if you're taking five minutes, I mean, it's still an industry standard, but you know, take your time. I mean, in such a way that it only takes you a couple of minutes. All right, make sense? So, <clears throat> the heart is here somewhere. So, we've placed our first leads on the human body. And our first point of view, or lead one, okay, is going to be from... Um, left. From right to left. From there to there. And we mark it with a Roman numeral one. As a matter of fact, you know, all three. Now, second point of view will go from there to here, and from there to there. This one right over here, the right leg, is called the ground. You don't have to know what that means. It just balances out the machine, any electrical activity, any kind of zaps or et cetera, they will go into the ground. Okay? Now, what geometric figure did I just draw? Yeah. A triangle. Mm -hmm. Very nice. This is a triangle. Lead one, lead two, lead three, and this guy is called? Eindhoven's, Eindhoven's triangle. triangle. So I have three points of view around my heart. I'm looking at the heart from there to there, from there to there, and from there to there. Now look. I'm looking at the Henry the Skeleton from here to here. This is one point of view. Then I'm going to look at Henry the Skeleton from this view. And then I'm going to look at Henry the Skeleton from this view. Okay, does this make sense? But it wasn't enough. Dr. Eindhoven said, you know what, I'm a scientist. I want to get a few more views out of this triangle. So he said, I'd like to be able to look, and the heart is in the middle here somewhere. I'd like to get another few points of view, and I'm going to put my pair of eyes over here and look down. I'm going to take my pair of eyes in this side of the triangle and look this way. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Okay, so, bang, bang, bang. I call this guy over here, looking from there to there, AVR. This guy, looking at from this side to the left, AVL. And this one I'm going to call AVF. Now, I'm not going to get into the science behind it, but I will tell you, Everything that I can. Do you see how these are points of view? Do you see that I'm looking? All of a sudden, I had my first line over here. Now, I'm going to go get in the middle. I'm looking at the heart. And now I'm looking at it from straight back. Then I had a line that was going like this. And now I'm going to go look towards this side. And the ditto over here. So I walked all the way around Henry the skeleton in this direction. And I saw him from every side. Don't you see that? Do you see that? It's like I'm checking out the heart. My first date with a heart, and I'm checking it out from every possible direction. Right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Folks, I'm only giving you a little bit of information. You don't need to know more, but you do need to know what AVR, AVL, and AVF stand for, because it's going to be on the test. Now, the, our EKG is subdivided into three sections. Three sections. First, they're called standard leads. Standard leads. Oftentimes they're called limb leads because we put these leads on the arms and legs, also known as leads, and they're marked by Roman numerals 1, 2, and 3. After that, the EKG has what they call augmented leads. And they're marked by letters A, V, R, A, V, L, and A, V, F. 
What do you think A stands for? The answer is on the board. Augmented. So augmented, augmented, augmented. Now, V must stand for something also. So since we're dealing with EKG or electrocardiogram, we're dealing with electricity. When you talk about electricity and you see a letter V, what could we be talking about? Voltage. Excellent. Or power. Amount of electrical power. So V stands for voltage. V equals voltage. So now we're beginning to see a picture. A stands for augmented. V stands for voltage. Now, for the $64,000 question, what do the letters R, L, and F stand for? Right, 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 right left, right, and feet. feet. And guess what? All of this is on the test. Now, we haven't gotten to the third part yet. So, I'm going to ask you, what could R stand for? What could L stand for? What could F stand for? And your job is to make sure you get augmented voltage, then R, L, F. One of those things, either right or left or feet, whatever. Does this make sense? So we have standards or limb leads, one, two, three. We got augmented leads, which we get from the Eindhoven's triangle. And then our next viewpoint. Now, watch this. Henry the skeleton has stickies. Huh? Feet. We're pointing to the feet. See that? Now, our next leads are on the chest. If you turn back, you will see a picture of them. Big poster right at the EKG st station right there. And by the way, these things are on the test also. You see those funny things marked with letter V, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6, and you see the, the text next to them? The text next to them says where they are located. You need to know the text. Like, for example, V1 says it's located on the fourth intercostal space, on the right margin of sternum. V2 says fourth intercostal space, left margin of sternum. V3 says between V2 and V4. V4 says fifth intercostal space along the midclavicular line. And then we got V5 and V6, blah, 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 blah. You need to study that text over there. And it's also on your handouts. So if I ask you, hey, where's V3 located? You say between V2 and V4. But if I ask you where's V4 located, you better darn well tell me. It's on the fifth intercostal space along the midclavicular line. And you should know what these words mean. Because I'll tell you. <laughs> Are you ready to go? Can I erase this? No. Oh, come on. <laughs> yes? Can I make my first thing? So I need all the material that was Don't worry. Everything is cool. Are you drawing this? <laughs> yes, I am. Every day is a first day here. No one has seen this before. It's the first day for me, too. It was some kind of a movie. It was kind of stupid. My first 72 dates, is that how it was? So oh, what's uh, this guy was... I don't know who the actors are. <laughs> yeah, it was just this guy was dating this girl and uh, she had amnesia. She would forget everything that happened oh, yeah. on the prior date. Yeah, first date. Yeah, something like that. All set? No, wait. Slow, slow. One more little bit, that's it. I'm going to start right over here. Look at this. <laughs> now you see it. You don't. Don't worry, I'll go over it again. All right. You can do it. Come on, come on. So, and the um, thing over there, they only use 10. Where's the other two go? <laughs> yeah, you're talking about 12 leads. So, where's the other two go? What, does, so just what does it say on the board? 12 leads. 12 points of view. I'm going over that right now. Stay tuned. Watch. Record. And then answer your own question in about 10 minutes. I'm done. All set? Yeah. Thank you. And so, now we need to use your imagination just a little bit. So did you notice how we looked at the heart? 
like this Henry the skeleton being the heart, we looked, you know, by placing leads on the arms and legs, and we looked at the skeleton from six different points of view so far. How many stickies did we use to obtain six views? No. These. No. No. How many stickies did we just put on? Four. We used four stickies. How many views did we get? Six. Six. One, two, three. AVR. I mean, AVR, AVL, AVM. Six from four stickies. Are we doing the math so far? So far, we just put things on arms. I mean, these are legs. On legs and arms. Hey, I've been working since 6 a.m. this morning, all right? Work with me. So far, so good. Four stickies, six leads. One, two, three, AVR, AVL, AVF, yeah. right? Yeah. Got it? Got it. Now, use your imagination. Now, the heart is right over here where my fist is, inside Henry the skeleton. Now, we're going to put stickies on the chest. How many stickies we got? Six. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, six. What's six. 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 Okay, fine. I forgot how to say six in Spanish, all right? Sue me. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take this body and we're going to cut it in half. <laughs> And we're gonna look up. Now check this out. <laughs> and this is what this is how it's going to look. The heart is here. This is the breastbone over here. Our ribs will look like circles going all the way around. Here we're gonna have our spine. Whatever the heck that thing looks like. And then more thingy dingies, ribs, as what they're are you called. Drawing? Huh? What are you drawing? Okay. Let's try to use our imagination one more time. I just sawed the body in half along these lines over here. Mm -hmm. And now I'm looking up this way into the body. Oh, the rib cage, okay. Well, the rib cage is going all the way around. This is the heart. These are the ribs. This is the breastbone. The lungs are over here. Okay? Now, this would be the left side. This would be the right side. Now, I'm going to show you how my stickies, how my electrodes look. And watch this. I'm placing one here. I'm placing two here. Three, four, five, six. And guess what this gives me? This gives me six more views. But how? Bang, 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 bang. So at first, I looked at the heart this way. And now I'm looking at the heart that way. So I have this way, my lead one, two, three, and four, five, six. I mean, lead one, two, three, AVR, AVL, AVF. And now, since I'm putting these leads, imagine going, looking from here, from there, from there, from there, from there, from there, at the heart. So first thing gave me a view from top to bottom, and now it's giving me a view from front to back. It's not for us to fully know all these things. I'm just giving you a little bit of information so you're not totally lost. This would be V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. How many stickies did we put on? Six. Six. How many stickies did we put on before? Four. How many all together? Ten. Ten. How many views did we get? Like Twelve. 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 <laughs> Did you catch that? Yeah. I, so, 10 stickies, 12 views. Science, ladies, science. Do we need to know the science? No. No. But now I'm going to teach you something. When you look at the EKGs, when you do them, you may have already seen some look tall, some look shorter, some look downright small, and some actually go upside down. Did you notice that? The squiggly lines. Sometimes they go like this and sometimes they go like this. Is that the position of the lead or something? It is the position of the lead but since it's a point of view. So let me ask you a question. Okay? If I were to look at, do me a favor, can you stand up, please? So, what's your name? So, Jasmine, Jasmine is standing in front of me, right? I'm looking at her, she's average height, right? 
Average height. So right now we're equal. Right now we're equal. What if I were to squat down like this? How would you look to me now? No. How do you look to me now? Imagine yourself. I'm looking at you from bottom up. Do you look smaller or bigger? Small. Small. No, she looks bigger to me because I'm looking up. But if I were to climb up on the table and look down at you, would you look taller or shorter to me? And if I were to climb up on the roof and look at you, it would look like an ant. The higher I go, the smaller you look. The lower I go, you'd look like a giant. Have a seat. So same thing here. Wherever I place my points of view, my electrical impulses from that direction will look differently. Are you catching my drift here? Are you catching what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Now, here is how the EKG looks. We got, when we print out the uh, EKG on the, on the piece of paper, the first you know, set of scribbles we get will be like this. Usually we'll get just a few beats. Then number two will be over here. Number three will be over here. Then you have a little line and then you're gonna start with AVR. The next line will be AVL, and this one will be AVF. So we're gonna get a squiggly line. I'm just gonna draw one. AVR will always go down. Bless you. Now, why did I do that? It's imperative for you to know what I just did over here. Lead one always points up while AVR always points down. You need to know this. Lead one must always point up. AVR must always point down. If you see that lead one is pointing down and AVR is pointing up, you have a problem. And the problem is that by accident, instead of left wire that's supposed to go to the left, you put it on the right. And instead of right, you put it on the left. So. If it's reversed, A V R is supposed to go where? Where yeah. does the arrow point? Yeah. A V R down. There's an arrow next to A V R. There's an down. arrow next to A V R. What? The, where does the arrow point? Yeah. That's right. So A V R must always point down. And where does lead one have to point? Up. Lead one has to point up. That's right. There you go. If you have that, yes. Uh, can you? Draw the first picture again. Which one? We missed the, uh, the first sticky is called like six, you know. You will have to catch this one on video. Oh, okay. And Sue will be going over this one more time. I, I, we have to move on forward. It's right. important. Otherwise, we'll never leave. Okay, so having said that, yeah. unless you want to keep taping this, you can sit there. All right, so. Do you see the different points of view? Remember, the word lead represents a point of view. Point of view. We have 12 points of view. We have 10 wires. We got standard or limb leads marked by Roman numerals 1, 2, 3. We got augmented leads marked by letters AVR, AVL, AVF. Augmented voltage right, augmented voltage left, augmented voltage feet. And then we have what they call vector leads, which was what we're talking about, marked by letter V. V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. Together, 12 points of view. You must, absolutely must, study the positions of V1, V2, V3. So if I wake you up at 3 o'clock in the morning, after you just had a massive party with alcohol involved, you should still be able to tell me the answers to all my questions. I love to ask people Study on the, the test of, the of the, where the stickies go on the chest. Oh, you That's must know where they go. They're there. They're in your handouts. They're everywhere. What's okay? it called again? Vector leads. Vector. Okay. So, all together, twelve leads. Does this make some sense? Please make sure you go over your notes. This is not a one-time affair. I do not expect you to memorize everything that I just said and internalize it and remember it forever from this lecture alone. 
but I do expect you to spend 15, 20 minutes a day reviewing your notes. It if you don't, you will fail. Is it also called precordial? They're also called precordial leads, okay? But they're most importantly called vector leads because they're marked like by letters V1, V2, and V3. Yeah, these are called vector leads. Does this make sense? Okay, here's a few other things that we must know. Ready? Where should, by the way, lead one always point? Standard lead one? Up. Up. AVR should always point? Down. And if they're reversed, what happened? That's not an answer. Wait a minute. AVR always point down? Lead one must always point up. up. AVR must always point down. If they are reversed, what did you do wrong? You misplaced the wires from the left side to the right side and vice versa. Okay? Please remember that. Because that is the, one of the most common mistakes that we do in the field. Accidentally put right on left and left on right because sometimes it just gets confusing. Even simple things like left and right get screwed up, okay? Especially if you're dealing with a stressful situation, it really, really, you know, gets you screwy sometimes, okay? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I thought it said right. And said, oh. Okay, it happens, all right? Don't sweat it. But when you look at the EKG and before you hand it to the doctor, look at the darn thing. Because what happens? The doctor looks at it and then it looks at you. and says, I'm telling you this because it happened to me. Last thing I want to look is stupid. I may myself be stupid, which is what my wife has been telling me for years. But the fact of the matter is, I don't want to look stupid in the eyes of the doctor because the man pays my check. And if they're signing their name to that check, it makes a difference what kind of a check it's going to be. If I'm stupid, it's a smaller check. If I'm smart and they don't want to let me go, it's a bigger check, and it gets bigger. Sky's the limit. Look, if the roles are reversed, you accidentally, and if you didn't look, and if you looked and you didn't notice, and the doctor says, Steve, go and redo this. You made a mistake. Oh, my goodness, doctor, I'm so sorry. I, I crossed the wires. At least you answered the question correctly. You know what you did wrong. But oftentimes they'll just throw something on the table and says, hey, redo it. Why? It looks good to me. Be self-critical. Assess yourself and see what did I do. Most common mistake. Okay? Now. I have a question. See. The wires on the um, table near the machine, it says C1, C2. These are, instead of V, they put letter C for chest. Yes, same thing. Okay. Okay? It makes no difference. B, C, whatever, as long as it says one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now, very important. Here is something you didn't see on our machine. Our machine gives us a printout of numbers instead of this little box right over here. But you must know what this box is because in the hospital, they're going to make sure that this thing is there. This little box before the printout. You said the arm machine? On our machine back our. here. Our. The one that we use here. On our machine, we do not have this. It's printed out with numbers, okay? This thing is called the standard. The standard. The standard shows the calibration of machine. In other words, it's like a speed limit sign on the, uh, on, on the highway. If you don't see a speed limit sign, you don't know how fast to go. And the police officer can't give you a speeding ticket because there is no speed limit sign, right? But if the sign says 55 and you're going 75, that means you're going 20 miles above the speeding limit. Well, that little box to the doctor shows all these things, that the, how the machine is calibrated, its voltage, its speed, and so on and so forth. Based on this little box, they can actually come up with a diagnostic information or diagnosis of somebody's cardiac condition. If the standard is missing, they cannot 
read the EKG. Therefore, if I ask you on the test a question having to do with a standard, you must remember the following sentence. Here it is. The sentence that you must remember. Without the standard, the EKG is unreadable. Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. The standard must be there, either in numbers or by this little box right there. And oftentimes you, you'll see three of them or six of them on the, paper, on the paper, depending how the machine is set up. But there will be at least one. When you, can, when you say without the standard, are you talking about that mark right there? That's exactly what I'm saying. That mark is called the standard, and without that mark, that EKG is unreadable. The thing that goes up and down is the standard. Mm -hmm. What am I pointing at? On the box. That box. Mm -hmm. That box is called the standard. See that? You see it? Mm -hmm. yes. Say yes. Then you got yeah, it. Okay, so that box right there, sometimes it's thinner, sometimes it's higher, it doesn't matter. But something that looks like this at the beginning of the EKG tracing, that thing is called the standard. Without that standard, the doctor cannot read the EKG. Diagnosis cannot be rendered. And you did your job poorly, and you have to do it again. So remember, if lead one is not pointing up and AVR is not pointing down, you did the wrong thing. Switch the sides. And if you got no standard, go back and do the EKG again. Don't break out the pencil and pencil one in. <laughs> Are you calling that thing that goes up and down the standard? The box. You see this right here? Does that show up on the thing? That's what on, I just. On the thing? That, that's what I kept saying. Mm -hmm. Our machine does not show this box. It shows numbers. Mm -hmm. But whether it's a set of numbers or a box like this, it's called a standard. You will see it when you do an EKG. So if the box is showing. It's the it, box it's or a set of numbers. Uh -huh. Okay, they're recorded on a piece of paper. It's either that or that. Okay? Uh -huh. Something that shows the calibration of the machine. All right? Otherwise, the doctor will have to take out a little ruler and calibrate it manually like this. Mm -hmm. Okay? If not, the machine tells them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it gives both representations. Okay? Does this make some sense? Yes. Good. Now I need to tell you a few other things that go wrong with the EKG, and then I put you in Sue's capable hands. Now, this is the way the EKG has to look. Now, I want you to imagine, and when you do the EKG, you know that the EKG is done on graph paper, right? It's kind of done along these squares, right? Mm -hmm. Squares have measurements, okay? I'm going to give you very basic information. You don't need to know all of it. Measurements going up measure voltage. Measurements going across measure time. That's what you, as a medical assistant, need to know. Measurements upwards measure voltage. Measurements going from left to right measure time. In other words, if I want to see how fast things go, I measure this way. If I want to see my power output, I'm measuring this way. But you're not measuring anything. You're just absorbing this information. So it's good for you. So which this way the time is going this way? Exactly where, the arrow, is going? Exactly where the arrow is pointing. Okay. Make sense so far? Yay, nay? OK. Now, I want you to see that the EKG that I have here travels in a straight line along an imaginary baseline, right? So in other words, I'm supposed to walk as if I'm an EKG going, watch this. Ba-boom, 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 ba-boom. I'm not going to go ba-boom, 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 right? I have an imaginary straight line, and I'm going to walk it, and I'm going to be regular. Ba-boom, ba-boom. Ba boom, right? It's not going to be one of these things. Oh, oh, I can't stand straight. I'm drunk. I'm, I'm all over the place, right? <laughs> so if this is regular, 
This right over here is what I'm describing to you. Now, you see that we got all these baboons and then ahs and then so on and so forth. We got all that stuff there. But instead of going along a straight imaginary baseline, this thing is wandering all over the place. You see that? So if my baseline is like this, this thing is right off the reservation, right? This has a name, and you will see it. This sucker is called the wandering <laughs> baseline. Wandering baseline. Do not hand an EKG to the doctor with a wandering baseline because you can fix it. It's not a patient's problem. It's your problem. You screwed this up. It may not be your fault, but it's something you can fix. And you know what brings on a wandering baseline? What it brings it on looks like that is on a, piece a of paper. Huh? It actually looks like that on a piece of paper. Yeah. Poor electrode connection. <coughs> so your stickies are pulling off. Somewhere along the way, you didn't glue them correctly, or the wires are pulling on them and there's a bad connection, or the person has sweated during the procedure and they just unglued. You will get a wandering baseline. So what are you going to do to fix that? You're going to check and make sure that all the connections are tight. You're going to fix your wires so they're not pulling on the tabs. Okay? Fix the wandering baseline. And then there's one more problem that you can fix. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. Do you see how flat and neat my lines are? But sometimes you will see your EKG like this. or some variation of this. Now, I want you to remember, I don't know, maybe you were a kid and you were watching cartoons, and then somebody at home, usually the mother, went there with a vacuum cleaner and started vacuuming while, around you while you're watching TV. What happened to the screen? Right? You lost your good reception to your TV. Bless you. Even with a cable, sometimes when your vacuum was powerful enough or some kind of other, you get static. Zzz. During electric storm, you're driving the car listening to the radio. Lightning hits. Instead of music, you hear zzz. Right? It's static, isn't it? Same thing when you do an EKG. Nowadays, it's even worse than it used to be before because everyone and their uncle has a smartphone. Guess what? Your smartphones are constantly emitting signals. When you do an EKG, the darn thing has to be off. So this right over here is, has a name, just like this has a name, it's called the Wandering Baseline. This guy right over here is called Artifact. Artifact simply means electrical interference. Steve, how far can the phone be so it doesn't Oh, you know what? It depends on your phone. I, you really shouldn't have a phone in your room when you're doing an EKG. I was in my EKG. EKG. I looked at the chair. You know how they have the chair close to the bed? Yeah. I was sitting down. Should that be okay? No, it, it, it generally, it should be. It all depends also how frequently it checks your email and bounces off signals. You know, your phones, whether you know it or not, they actually work as the transmitters for other telephones. I mean, you ever wonder why you always have such decent receptions, especially when people with your service are around you? What happens is that their phones amplify your signal and your phone amplifies their signal. So it bounces it off. So they're constantly interacting with one another, sharing data. Everybody knows everything about you. Okay, so be careful with them phones. And more importantly, you do an EKG, your patient has a phone, the doctor has a phone, the three of you in the room Can have you a phone. Ask the patient to turn off their Absolutely. Phone? Not ask, but definitively tell them to take it off, I mean, turn it off, or leave it outside with the relative or whatever. Okay, makes sense? But don't you yourself answer calls and text while you're doing an EKG. I mean, that's not professional at all, so don't do that. So this is called artifact, which means electrical interference. I mean, I have a story that uh, kind of boggles the mind a little bit. I tell the story all the time, and I'm going to mention it to you. And I, wanna, I always preface it this way. People come to see the doctor for many reasons, and sometimes they're medical. Listen to what I just said. 
People come to see the doctor for many reasons, and sometimes those reasons are actually medical. Other times, they're psychosocial. They're lonely. Who goes to see the doctor most often? Old women. <laughs> Why? Why? Because their husbands already died. Women live longer than men. Congratulations, uh, congratulations y'all. <laughs> of course, I heard well, you that. You shouldn't have drank. <laughs> <laughs> I heard this from an interesting old guy. And he said, son, he says, do you know why men uh, uh, live shorter lives than women? Or is it, well, how did it go? Why do men die before women? The answer is because we want to. Uh. Uh, you do it to us. In any case, <clears throat> I didn't say that. My wife wasn't here. Uh. Honey. In any event, um, what was I saying? Yeah. So oftentimes they will show up, and this is very important because you need to know this. A lot of times these women will show up, their husband died, and they went back to their maiden name. It's very important for you as medical assistants to make sure that when they come in and you know that their husband passed away or whatever, make sure there's a reason. This is why we take a picture of their social security card, their ID, and so on and so forth, because if they change their name, it'll be reflected in the ID. All right, and if the insurance information is different from before, it says, oh, this is uh, Mrs. Smith. She's not Mrs. Smith. She's Miss, Miss Peabody again, or whatever the heck the name was. So, but you've known her for the last 30 years because she was a frequent flyer in your office as Mrs. Smith. Well, Mr. Smith croaked, and she went back to her maiden name. That changed her insurance information, but you did not know that. And you submit a bill to the insurance company and say, we don't have such a person. To help you change that name? So you need to take a picture of their ID and their insurance card just about every time they come in. And they say, well, why do you need it, honey? I come here once a week. <laughs> you need it for this reason. Now, the other reason is people are crazy. A lot of them are sexual perverts, and they will use you as their toy. So do not strike up a conversation about anything because people are insane. For all I know, half of you are medicated too, but I'm, I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> but, you know, imagine that. Most people are medicated, and they go see the doctor, and they have all sorts of weird things happening to them, and you take their, you know, EKG. Make sure you're very specific about what you tell them as you do the EKG. Please don't tell anyone, okay, we're going to do an EKG, so go ahead, take off your clothes, lie down on the table. You show up back in the room, they're buck naked. <laughs> Hello? Well, I just did what you said. <laughs> I want to see this. You hear about them people with trench coats on the train, you know? And they're all patients of some doctor. Oh, yeah. And they will come and see you. And you will be their toy. But don't get suckered in. So be very specific about your instructions. And if the little voice inside your head says, there's something rotten in Denmark, <laughs> believe yourself and invite another team uh, member from your office to come in and be with you. Do not offer to help to hold on or take off the old lady's jewelry. They will say you stole it. Why? Because they want to have a conversation. They want to have people feel bad for them. And then when you're going out of your mind, you're thinking of ways, how do I replace the necklace that dear old Henry gave it to me on our first date? Oh, I found it in my pocket, sorry. You were just about to string yourself up. And people are saying, she's a thief, and everybody's hiding their bag away from you as you walk into the lunchroom. <laughs> I'm telling you, folks, it's ugly out there. I'll tell you my story about artifacts. And I was just a boy of 19, and I was doing an EKG on a nice lady who I thought was old at the time. She was about my age. Now I think she would be young. <laughs> so this 40-year-old bag, I mean, that lady is in, is in the doctor's office, and I'm 19 doing an EKG on her. And I'm doing an EKG, and I'm getting this artifact. I got rid of the pagers. Back then, no cell phones. Pagers. Okay? Uh, I turned off the lights as many as I could. I made sure that no radio or TV was working anywhere. And still, I'm getting an artifact. And she says, what's wrong, honey? 
I was still a honey at the time. And uh, I said, well, ma'am, uh, I keep getting this interference on here. Somewhere in the room, there is an electrical gizmo working. And she looks at me with a smile and she says, oh, could this be this? And she pulls out a remote control. What was the remote control for, you ask? A vibrator in her pants. Oh, oh no. So she shot that off and the artifact was gone. Now, I did turn all sorts of colors. My lips were quivering and stuff like that. I, and, you know, to make a long story short, oh I said... this happened this year? <laughs> Thank you for thinking that I'm still 19. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, this happened... 27 years ago, yeah, 27 years ago, I'm almost 46, and uh, Honey said, thank you, ma'am. I did not get into a conversation. <laughs> You're a sick old lady. I didn't. But the fact of the matter is, you'll see all kinds. You will see piercings. You will see tattoos. You will see oh, chains connecting my. all of the above. And I'm telling you, don't make faces. Don't get into conversations. Don't say, oh, that's nice. Where, where did you get this? I always wanted one of those. Because they'll tell you. And they'll show you more. Don't go there. You don't want to be a part of this. It's a sick game. And I'm telling you, they're medicated. And when they walk out of the office, and say, you know, Steve is a sick man. He Wait made a second, but it's... The vibrator thing, that's not illegal for the person to have that No, vibrator. they can do anything they damn well want to, sure. but it interferes with your EKG because yeah, it's because electrical impulse. They have to take out, out that just have to. They just have to turn, turn things off. No. But if they have too many chains and etc. and it interferes with your stickies, then, then yes. But before you make that determination, again, as I told you, always call in the doctor. They get paid more than you do. And the actual agreement for treatment is between the patient and the doctor, not you. So don't tell them to do anything. Just say, I'll be right back. I'll get the doctor. Thank you. I, and just be, be done with yourself and, and go. Do not get into any extra conversations with these people. Again, if the little voice inside your head says, they're crazy. They are. Or maybe you are. In either case, get somebody else. <laughs> All right? Does this make sense? Does this make sense? Artifact means electrical interference. Turn everything off, get rid of the cell phones, fix it. If it doesn't get fixed, restick everything. Okay? But don't hand this to the doctor. If you do it twice, three times, four times, go talk to the doctor and say, Doc, I just can't get this done. Or get another pair of eyes in there. Okay? Safe? Yeah. Are we okay with this? Again, I don't expect you to be a cardiologist by the time you finish with this class. But if you don't review your notes, you're going to forget everything. Education and you know, learning the material has to come in three stages. First, you hear the information. And you say, wow, that's good stuff. Then you go home and you internalize the information by reviewing your notes. Mm -hmm. And third stage of learning is mastery of this, edu of this information. Mm -hmm. You master it. Meaning, if I ask you at 3, three o'clock in the morning, after a drunken orgy, I mean party, <laughs> and you say, yeah, V4, fifth intercostal space along the midclavicular line. You got it. Does this make sense? Yes. I'm done with you. <laughs> Any questions? Ask Sue. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, you're welcome. Don't forget, $20 a piece, my table, uh, cash only, and, and don't tell Najee. God, I hope it recorded. That was so good today. I know. <laughs> Thank you, dear. That's good. All right, ladies, enjoy yourselves. Do EKGs. Oh, historical man, that thing is hot.